All right. Welcome everybody to the house. Man, you fucking motherfucker. <laughs> you know what? You know what? No. F- fuck the intro. All right, here, here I go. This is already so much content. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Hauntology podcast. We've been trying to get through this intro very hardly for the past two minutes, so let me just introduce myself and my partner trying here. Trying hard or hardly trying, am yeah, I right? Yeah, hardly trying, exactly. Um, it is I, Philithos, okay? And I finally Philithos? have new content for you. What? <laughs> Dr. Philithos. It is I, Dr. Philithos. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry, a serious uh, face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely serious. So, we are philosophers. What am I talking we are about? <laughs> monster hunter philosophers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay it's okay we were giggly we were a little bit giggly for the first episode um mm. so you guys might know me at this point a little bit you probably didn't hear the name because i'm so dramatic in my voiceovers in the videos but i am Velithos, and i'm i don't know i'm i guess i'm some sort of like dramatic summon that exists everywhere right i'm always there to annoy everybody and this is my partner rhyme <laughs> who's a crocodile with glasses. Sup. I like that you <laughs> I, say you're always there and then you just don't upload for like two years. I, I know. <laughs> Man, don't bring this up. Hello, I wanted to make a good impression on that audience, you know, to set it up. <laughs> yeah. The audience or the lack thereof. Yeah. You, you know what? You know what? I think you, maybe you don't have an audience because you keep eating them. <laughs> maybe. Because you're a crocodile. Now, now what are you going to say? Crocodiles eat people, in case you didn't know. Now I'm Common fact. I'm scared. I'm going to go back to the Shadow Realms. Anyway, so, so we are here today to actually talk with Bond Hunter, not just goof around and do some bullshit. So, Wait, I was not told this. Yeah, where you, are, you have been set up by me uh, to talk about Bond Hunter Wilds. Have you heard of that? Do you know what that means? No. So like an, <laughs> yeah, so, an indie g- g- copy yeah, of like, like the game? It's a small indie game that nobody has ever heard of. Like apparently gotcha. there was like there was like one kind of before like that was like yeah, like you know you know the one that's <laughs> called World. It has like, there's like the World has been significantly smaller than Rise, obviously, right? So is World like the only Monster Hunter <laughs> game? Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> it is actually kind of sad how little uh, views Rise has compared to World on like Twitch. Oh, it is that crazy. Is insane. That is. It's like but, s- several thousand compared to a few hundred. You know, that's actually a good way to start the whole podcast, which is, man, dude, the world is just how much attention the world gets in comparison to Rise. People love is, world. People love world. It is crazy how much they love it. Oh, but yeah. why do they love it so much? Because, and I think this is fairly obvious, it is more directed towards a Western audience. Do you think that makes than a rises? big difference? I think it does, yes. Like, I, I, do I think that's a, the, the, the main reason why World blew up and why it's still liked more than Rise today. Because the old games, a lot of people like the old games even in the Western world, right? Yeah. But it never kind of blew up. It was always kind of like a niche game. It, you would go around asking people if they know Monster Hunter and 9 out of 10 people would say no. Oh, yeah. Mm. They, like, uh, and mostly today, the like, everybody are... knows Monster Hunter. Yeah, nowadays everybody knows it, but I come from the time where nobody played that game. Like, it was really hard yeah. to actually get anybody to play with you because, like, people would start playing Monster Hunter. They would be like, I hate this game. <laughs> it would, that would be the, that's like the most common start to get into Monster Hunter, which is you start playing the game and you get your ass whooped. And then yeah. suddenly it clicks and you're like, I can't stop playing the game. But then I got mauled by a great joggy back in the day. It was fantastic. You got what? I got mauled by a great joggy. Really? Did you yeah. die from it? Oh yeah, I lost the quest. Damn. But how many times did you call it? <laughs> I lost the quest. Three. Damn. That is <laughs> my condolences. You know, I, I yeah, started It with, was fun. I, I think I had a really unique start with Monster Hunter in general, uh, which is I started with Monster Hunter Freedom 2 and Monster Hunter Try at the same time. So I would be downstairs in the living room playing Monster to Try, right? Because there was a TV. And uh, if I wasn't allowed to play downstairs, I would go up and play Freedom 2 on the PSP. Gotcha. Yeah, for me, it was Freedom Unite and Try. 
I started mm-hmm. Try a lot earlier, and then we picked up Freedom Unite and played it on PSP with like four people. Which is a whole different experience from Try. It's massively different. Yeah, it is very different. But, but I think most I think... of my time I spent alone because, again, most of my friends didn't want to play the video game. And playing Monster Hunter Online back in the day, even more so than now, was more like, oh, get lucky that you don't get a Cheeto who just one-shots the monster. And get lucky that you don't get gate-kept by the Tryhard Hunters. <laughs> yeah, there were Tryhard Hunters that would gatekeep. Oh yeah, I got I re- shit because I I was wearing like an a full Agnector armor against Alatreon back in the day. I was the only one who didn't cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is like I mean I remember this, but I think that like uh so the people that I play with still today, Monster is I met them in the in-game voice chat of uh, Three Ultimate, mm. and it was quite weird to talk over that whatever that voice chat was with them, um but. What was really funny, what, what was like, what I can say is that we would actually make lobbies, but we were only three people, so we would only have like a, we would always have like a random guy coming in, and there was always this dynamic of us just wanting to finish the the hard quests, but you had these random players who would come in there with like mix sets that didn't give them any abilities, and we would gamble <laughs> on like, okay, will this guy cart or not? Because if they will cart within the first three minutes, they're absolute trash. <laughs> we would actually sometimes restart the quests. Which is <laughs> Yeah, I know I know it sounds weird. It, it sounds like now with the videos that I have up, I'm probably the like I appear to be the complete opposite of gatekeeping. It's just that back then it was like it was pretty much the Wild West of trying to get things done. Because if you had somebody who was absolutely terrible at the game. Who would then go and card three times just because they don't know what an armor set is and how to get abilities in your set uh, would just be wasted twenty minutes or even thirty. But I, right. but I would, what I would say, let's go back to actually world because uh, so many people think about uh, world as uh, sorry, uh, think of wilds as monster the world too. That's yeah, that's like what successor to world. Exactly, but but what do you think about that? Like, would you agree to that or like well from like the the graphics and the way the game looks and uh, it looks like it feels right it looks like the the gameplay feels i would say it is very close to world and not very close to rise at all yeah though like i think that's one comparison that uh, a lot of people draw now which is it's like hey i started with monster Hunter world it's my favorite monster hunter ever and there's there has never been any monster Hunter before that. It's like for them, this is the only game that exists. So when when Rise released, when they look at Rise, they're like, I don't want to see this. This is terrible. And then they look at this, oh yeah, Monster Hunter Wilds is gonna be world too. But I would actually say yeah. and argue that uh what a lot of people don't really keep in mind is that this is pretty much Monster Hunter World 6. Because you had Monster Hunter 1 that tried that. You had Monster Hunter Dose, which tried that. You had to try, you had four, and you had five, which is world. And now you have Monster Hunter 6, which, you know, is called Wilds. So, like, in my opinion, I, I get it why people call it that, because, like, obviously the, the, um, the art direction is very, very in line with, like, Monster Hunter World, right? And this is a good thing, in my opinion. Again, I think it gets most out of, uh, out of the monsters and the imaginative realism that they use, uh, which they're really good at. Um, but I, I'm kind of like the guy. I don't want to dismiss the entire history of Monster Hunter that has led up to what Monster Hunter World is that people love so much, and actually Wilds, because right now I would actually say that just from what I heard so far about Wilds, Wilds is going to be my favorite Monster Hunter ever. Period. And I'm not even, I don't have a single doubt that it will be. We'll see. I could see it being that for me as well. Um, so far, um, I'm still torn between Rise and World, personally. I do right. believe that I prefer World in like the overall aspect of like you know the 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 end product essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but there are absolutely parts of Rise that I wish were in more Monster Hunter games, and that I hope come return to Wilds in one way or another, such as the the variety in weapons, and not not weapons necessarily, but the variety in in one weapon that you get to choose from 
and kind of design the way that you want to, which does remind me a little bit of the the Monster Hunter Tri Bowgun building. Wait, hold on, hold on. What exactly are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, worlds of weapons, or you mean like Rise's way of move set changing with uh, switch skills? I was talking about what I want from Rise to be in other video games. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So mostly switch skills, obviously, but also like general changes to the weapons. Mm. Well, yeah, I think that I think what a lot of people don't really understand, like so far, like because they're pretty new to the monster thing. I mean, there's people who call themselves veterans, like play that have only played, played only world, <laughs> only world, which is kind of cute. Not to blame, not to blame them for anything, right? But you know, you gotta play a little bit more monster the games to call yourself a veteran to see the patterns on how they design things. Uh, right. Well, it could like be a monster- world veteran if you want to be. Yeah, that you can call it that, I'm sure. But I would say that it, what lots of people don't really see yet because they don't have that, let's say, mileage of playing multiple Monster Hunter games, like being there for the releases, is that Monster Hunter has always been a, a franchise that would take, <coughs> sorry, that would take uh, a lot of freedom to ex- to explore new ideas, but then they would go. Uh, they would take only the best of what worked. They would tone it in a way so that it makes sense for the next Monster Hunter uh, game. And then mm-hmm. they would add and experiment more with that new Monster Hunter game. And that is why Monster Hunter right. has always been an, uh, an evolving franchise, which I absolutely That's love. also why most things didn't actually stay in the games, because most mechanics were a little yeah. too ambitious, let's call them that. Yeah, they were. And then some things just stay, like monster riding. Well, except absolutely. for in... In uh, Rise, it didn't because they had a new fun idea. Yeah, but I think I I respect Monster Hunter and especially like the, the Monster Hunter uh, development team. I, I really respect them for always experimenting and thinking about more things that they could do with the Monster Hunter, let's say formula, right? Because yes. I, I think that one of the worst things that can happen to any franchise is when they stop experimenting and exploring new ideas, because then you do yeah. will just have generic stuff that is being repeated here and there. You could play any Monster Hunter game, except for like like four and for you. You don't have to play both. Just play for you, for example, right? Yeah. But like from the, the the bigger Monster Hunter games, you could play every single one, and it would feel different to play. All right, that that brings me to something. There is a big topic uh, in the Monster Hunter. Let's say the bubble, right? The the Monster Hunter <laughs> hood, as we call the it. bubble. <laughs> no, it's called the hood. Dramatic I think the hood, title effect. The bubble. Okay, fine. We go for the bubble. So right now, people are on the absolute roofs. They're screaming at the top of their lungs because they are so concerned that the new visuals, that they are going for something that is too realistic for what makes Monster Hunter so fun and engaging. Which is, for example, a lot of things in Monster Hunter world, uh, people call that that aspect that people talk about, which is really, really subjective, is how immersive the game is, right? Like how the yeah. art direction fe- just makes you feel like a hunter. That's what Monster Hunter Wood really excels at, in my opinion. But now that they see the Monster Hunter Wilds trailer, they have pushed that aspect of immersion or like of that imaginative realism so, so far that people are starting to be very concerned with is this the Monster Hunter? Like, am I, is this, is, are, is this going to like make the gameplay? Worse, because I don't think it does. Like I, I, I think it's just that's just a cherry on top that it looks really good. Because I know that the uh, the developers are probably they are mainly going for the gameplay. They want to play their games themselves. Right. So I don't see a direct connection between better visuals and worse gameplay, mm-hmm. unless we're talking about sacrificing sacrificing work hours or effort, right? So like mm-hmm. if you if you let's say you have like a thousand hours to work on this thing, you could like put five hundred into the visuals and then you only have five hundred for the rest. Yeah. And maybe that's not enough, right? But I don't think that is what what is happening at all. Because they've never done that and I don't think they ever well, they have done that once, which was uh Rampage Quest. Yeah, was it though? You mean well, that they invest it, to, a lot to of... me it feels a lot like uh, people just did not put in the time needed to make that thing good. Oh uh, yeah. Like the, the the most thing <clears throat> that the, the thing that stands out the most for me 
is things like, oh, we don't know how to balance the fact that you can stand on these platforms and shoot at things. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them unfair hitboxes so they just hit you anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, what, that, that's you, the kind of you, stuff. You, yeah, I understand. There, there, should, there should have been more time and thought going into the mechanic to make the mechanic work. Yeah, like, and well, I don't what, think that's happening for Wilds at all. Yeah. So what, what you were talking about is pretty much that <clears throat> if they are putting a focus on, uh, if they use their resources and they put it all on the visuals, but in the end they have not put like the effort, uh, sorry, the the resources into what actually makes the game the game. Yeah. Then it's just like, well, okay. Everything looks great, but where's the game, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And the thing course, is, we already exactly. know that's not the case because we know that there's depth <clears throat> to even the three monsters that have been named. Yeah. Um, don't ask me what they're called. I can remember one of them. There's and a frog. I like that. I, th- there's a frog. He's like called Ch- Chatter something. I keep forgetting. Chattercabra, that's the I one. I And... Like this guy has a mechanic. I don't know if you read this. It is on the the Monster Hunter page. It has a mechanic where it can it uses its, its saliva to put rocks on its fists. What the hell? <laughs> I have not heard that. That is it's on the Monster Hunter page. That is awesome. It is really cool. Yeah, but the, yeah, the guy, I absolutely understand. Like it would be absolutely it was it would be so sad if they put all the effort into the visuals and all of that, but we're not getting like. Let's say, uh, but let, let's let's be fair here. Just let, let me dream a little bit. If we don't get forty cool monsters in the base game, in total, like I would be fine with thirty if they're really varied, you know. And there's a lot of complexity in different skeletons that we are engaging uh, with. But I want to see monsters too. So I would be I would right. be immensely disappointed if they all spent their budget on the story and the visuals, but they don't have cool monsters in there that actually make the game what the game is all about. Would well, I get a fun it? fact for you. Mm-hmm. A very fun fact, in fact. Um, <clears throat> Monster Hunter World had 36 monsters without the DLC. Yes. Right? 36. That is not a lot of monsters. That is, is very not. low that on is the list low. of Monster Hunter games. That is number 17 of all Monster Hunter games, including Online and Frontier. Which is a little unfair. Yeah. But it is, it is only more than Freedom G3 and Monster Hunter 1. It is less than Portable 3. It is less than Monster Hunter 2. I think only Monster Hunter Try has actually less monsters. No. I think that one has less. Freedom has less, G has less, Try has less, and Monster Hunter 1 has less. Oh, okay. Well, sorry. Yeah. Just... yeah. Now, now the, 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 the fun part is, and this is where it gets interesting, if you're talking about first appearing monsters, it is the first one in the list, if you ignore online and, fr- and uh, Frontier. Mm-hmm. It has 22 new monsters. Yeah, Generations is, is the next one in line at 19. Yeah, that is that is something that I think a lot of... Like, if a friend of mine, he that's one of his biggest criticisms for, uh, for World, which is, he's all about the monsters. Like, I totally understand that. I am too. And I'm not, not completely, but he, he's really in for the monster hunting, right? So he wants to see really cool monsters. So he he's like, Hey, in these games, in the older titles, we had this amount of monsters, which made it so every time you go in and you fight those, they are, you know, have you have the number says there's there's forty monsters in there, so I can fight forty monsters. But yeah, you know, the like considering that back in the older titles, you had monsters that uh, were pretty similar to to another, and like, you know, some of them, like even subspecies, were just literally recolors. They had like one new move. It didn't really change a lot. So like, yeah. like green what they. Please, Earth. <laughs> Green pleasing. That's pretty. They, that guy, you know what that did? Every all that changes was that I think they only made the hitbox of the hip check wider. That is, I think that is it. That's how it feels like. <laughs> but like pleasure, <laughs> fake pleasure. Don't, don't nobody draw that, please. Thank you. Oh, please you didn't, I, I get news oh, for you. Oh no, no, no. I want, I want to see it. I don't want to see it. Please don't. <laughs> But like, yeah, like what I, what I really like about the sixth generation, uh, sorry, what I really like about the fifth generation of Monster, which yes. is a world and rise, is that despite the, this, despite the monster, let's say roster, as we call it, right, being less, the variety of like how you can engage in those monsters mechanically has significantly just exploded. Like, for example, oh, don't call Ra- it less just yet. Well, it, if you if you include Iceborne, you get to seventy one monsters, which is the same number that Jen has 
and is only less than like 4U and GU. I, I am aware. And then you have 17 new ones in the DLC alone. That's 17 monsters. That's pretty damn good. I think Rise has like 20 or something. The Sunbreak has 16. And yep. Rise is 19. So we, we, we are most likely getting at least 30 new monsters. Oh, yes. That's large monsters, by the way. That's not small ones. It's large monsters. Like I think, I think we can absolutely count on that for Wilds, we are definitely going to get a just already from the trailer we see four different monsters and how they move and what skeletons they have so i think that we can definitely go and say that there's going to be at least at least 20 different uh, monsters that are really yeah. just from a from a gameplay approach are very unique in what they what they are doing. i think it's going to be 30 for the base game i think it's going to be 30 yeah it's, I mean, it's probably a good number who knows and the thing is since it's based on the world philosophy of detail all of these are going to be in depth and really fucking cool, and get, they're going to feel alive, yeah. unlike the ones in Rise. <laughs> and also, like you also got to consider that they are now putting a big emphasis on hordes and in a hierarchy of monsters, meaning that you have now apex monsters. They're currently referred to that; it's not confirmed that they're really apexes again. Right? <laughs> you yeah, don't need a third just, type of apex. Yeah, with another apex type. There you go. Uh, but there's there's pretty much now monsters that are the big ones. They are there because they are the big guys. They have a crown on their head, pretty much. And then there's the smaller ones who are inferior. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So you can go and you can engage in those hordes, apparently, in very in various ways. Uh, but the big one in the end will be the one thing that you probably will engage in most. So yeah. yeah that, so from what I've heard, you like lure the big one away from the others and then fight it. Well, if you can do that, like I mean, yeah, sure, oh, sure you it, can it, do that apparently. But I wonder how it is point. in gameplay if you don't lure it away. Yeah, that is one thing. And the other thing that I'm asking myself is, do I have to do that every time I want to hunt a thing like that? Because that, oh, that would be, be terrible. That could be terrible. Like if you I imagine yeah. if I'm in end game and I always have to just move them away, that sounds like it's like almost like the tedium of. In a sunbreak and end game, when you grind like anomalies, just always having to go out of your way to collect all of the spirit birds. Mm. That that yeah. is just that's just really annoying to me. I just it is very that. annoying to do. I agree. Thing is, I could imagine the the horde thing being like a special event kind of thing. Like, oh, there's currently a horde in this location. Oh, well, I it's mean, not like going to be is... like, oh, want to hunt this thing? I have to clear a horde every time. It's like currently there's a horde there, and then yeah. later mm -hmm. it's not going to be a horde there. That I kind mean, of what, stuff. It could be like is... story based, something along those lines. I mean, what is confirmed is that uh, the environments are always changing, and that weather conditions are pretty much like one of the most important bit about that. But there's this right. thing that we already know, which is the sandstorm, which always moves around the map apparently, or like can appear or not, and um, will affect how the maps are actually. Uh, how much of the map, for example, is revealed? So apparently, as I, if right. I understand that correctly, the sandstorm can appear and it will pretty much like fill up the areas so that the map is now different from when there is no sand. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. This is on the 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 monster on the main page too. They have the screenshot of the the map. I forgot what it's called, and they have the the regular map. Then they have what happens where the sandstorm comes in, and then there's a third one with uh, the lightning coming down onto the big moon-like object uh, eclipse-like mm -hmm. object yeah. um so there's going to be several separate stages or several stages to maps and it is also pretty much confirmed that we will have more than one map uh, it makes a lot of sense too oh yeah it does but then the question is does that map have an in-depth weather change like the other one because if you try to force that on every single map it could it could well be well, forced, yeah. it, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense to have to. I don't think it map. would be the, the same thing in every map, but I think there's going to be really interesting parts about every single map that exists. And I also think because of that, it's going to be less maps. What I do know uh, is that um, they they have. Uh, I don't know if this is confirmed or something, but I I I know that this is going around right now, which is that uh, the the map that we have seen right now. Oh, obviously, we haven't seen anything about it. we didn't even look at like the, the grand scope of that map right it, we don't even know how big it really is but what i do have heard is that the the verticality of that map is pretty impressive like, it's pretty deep so like you can actually you have one gigantic map but actually 
you, there's a lot of upward and there's a lot of downwards. And like considering that is like, I mean, think of it like the, you know how we had the guiding lands in world in Iceborne? So it's yeah. almost like, like, I don't think we're going to get it that complex and that labyrinthy kind of thing, right? But that kind of shows me just already a little bit on like how they might manage that in terms of like transitioning like different different uh, let's say biomes with another because like there's like a place where you go to the surface and there's a bunch of sand but then let's say you go down into the map into a cave or something and it's full of it's full of sand that uh, comes from above because the sandstorm is right there right so i think that's really cool because that makes it so that yeah. everything becomes really dynamic that's the level of the the detail that I'm talking about that that originated from the world philosophy of we want this thing to be alive, we want there to be detail and interaction in everything, and they're doubling down on that, which I fucking love because that's what made world so great. Yeah, it it is awesome. So there is um there's something that happens there with with all that interactivity of the new monster hunter generation, it's summit mod uh, generation six, which I'm absolutely in love with, which is. So now we know that they're going to have weather conditions. They're going to have a gigantic map that changes according to that. And there's a there's definitely going to be a, a day and night cycle because you weather know that they conditions were already a thing. Yeah, they, those conditions are not new. But what's cool here is that now they have said that we are going to it is going to be a thing that monsters will change behavior according to these conditions. Mm -hmm. So that means yeah. that you don't only go in and you say, oh, I'm going to take on that quest and, oh, it's nighttime. At nighttime, this guy pops up and let's get, go kill it. No, it's that, I, I don't know how far, like, this is really speculative, but in terms of gameplay, I can really kind of like imagine it that if you go and you fight a monster at night, it will fight very differently if it's daytime and there's a sandstorm going on. Do you kind of like know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to be a difference in the monster's combat other than the behavior out of combat. I think oh, yeah. it's going to be more out of combat. Yeah, that probably makes more sense. I, I do, I we'll do have, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm hoping. I have a little bit of hope. There's absolutely going to be, be like yeah. stuff that gets affected by weather, even just by the fact that we have like these uh, lightning rod kind of monsters, and then we have this flying dragon that uses lightning, so there's got a big focus around lightning. And there's a high chance that there's going to be big focus around other parts of weather on other maps. Oh, um, yeah. Or even, or even on the same map. If you go into, like, the more foresty part of the map, which is confirmed to, to exist, there's going to be different stuff there. There's going to be different uh, interactions there. Oh, yeah. Probably. Have you, have, you, have, you heard of, uh, have you heard of Thor Magala? Does that ring a bell? Yes. Okay, it's, it's pretty much the, the railgun... Uh, <laughs> golden dragon uh, anyways we don't know its name yet but uh they they have said that um so so turf wars are obviously going to come back as i mean everybody knows that at this point but what is quite unique for when it comes to like the sandstorm for example is that apparently this thor magala thing is sort of like it it is it's it's the alpha okay it's <laughs> it it's like the absolute the peak thingy of the sandstorm and it makes it makes uh, use of it, so you actually mm. can lure monsters in the sandstorm. So that Thormagala thing is gonna zap all the big monsters, and you can, you know, right. get a lot of damage from that or something like that. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting too. Being able to rile monsters up against each other, which we already have to some extent in like turf wars, right? And turf wars are awesome. They but are. Imagine that being less hard coded and more oh, fluent. Oh, that's beautiful. You mean that they're, they're like more dynamic? So like you just yeah. go and you keep fighting. You don't have to stand and watch with your camera pointed at it. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't like <laughs> lock in on one HP. That would be great. Being, oh God, a there's monster be being so able to kill moments. another monster would be great too. Excuse me, what? A monster being able to kill another monster. Oh, that yeah, that I would love to see that. Because we didn't. Because it doesn't happen. Really. The only thing that would have happened is like when a Vespoid kills a Rathalos with like its sting. <laughs> That's like the only thing that ever happened to me. I actually like have a clip where Westboid kills a Hermitor and it looks like my, my Sonic <laughs> Bomb kills him. It's really oh, funny. Um, but yeah, um, the, the, the point is what happens in like World and even in Rise is they, that they lock in on 1 HP if they are in these kind of big animations because you don't want the animation to be cancelled and then they are on 1 HP and you could kind of kunai them and they die uh, or slingshot them. And 
I could see them having like a specific animation for killing another monster in these kind of situations today. Absolutely. Or, I, I, I see guess that next like, year. I, I think that they're going to do that because I think, I mean, we already know that. I mean, let's bring up the best example of like monster interactivity, which is Devil Joe picking up a great Jagras and using it like a softball. Yeah. Like that is like, how can you, this is so great. But now that we see in the trailer, like how the monsters, like there's like the, the worm thingy that people really think, thought about, like, oh, if they like that thing or not. It's great that this thing wraps around a monster and, like, you know, really does things with those. I think it's great. Have we seen that? Yeah, we did. Like, in the second trailer. I don't know. Have you seen it? You, you sure have seen I've it. seen it several times. I don't remember it interacting with another monster. So there's a sand, there's the big sandworm, which wraps around the, the bear thing. There's, like, a gosserac, but it's not a gosserac. And it pulls it down and makes, like, a... I don't know if it pulls it down. But yeah, I, th- I think you just gotta, you should just uh, revisit that and take a look hmm. at it. Okay, yeah, in any case, uh, the the worm is one of those things where initially I was like, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> and then you have the close-up shot of what it looks like and you see the detail and the work that went into creating this and it's, it's just really cool. Yeah, it is. You know, the, the phenom- there's sort of, sort of like a phenomenon going on right now with Monsanto, which is like, you have these two trailers, and even the Monsanto, the Monsanto veteran creators, like people that have been making Monsanto content for like over 10 years now, even they look at these two trailers and they're like, I feel weird about this. And they don't know why. And like at this point, I also thought about this because of some of my friends also feel that same way. And I told them, you, you, you don't feel weird. Everybody feels uh, weird about this right now. And I thought about this and why is that the case? And then I, I came to the conclusion, it's like this. Imagine you have the greatest cook ever, right? And now this cook, you, you observe that cook and that cook shows you that they're mixing egg, pepper, and uh, chocolate cream into one bowl. And you stand there like, how in the fuck is that going to taste good? Right? And then you, right. you walk away from that and apparently like, maybe you come later and you, you see and you can taste whatever they cooked up with that. And maybe it tastes good or not. So this is like the weirdness that we're kind of like observing right now. Like if I would make a metaphor out of that. Like, did you feel weird about the trailer when you saw it? Um. Well, I I had I did talk about that. I had this feeling of what the fuck is that? Because it does look like what the fuck is that? Like that that feeling hasn't changed. It's like if oh, you yeah, look yeah. that thing in the eyes, if there even are any, what the fuck is that? That that feeling remains. Yeah. It is more about, it's kind of like everything else around it. The, the face still looks fucking weird as fuck, and that is intentional. The face look, looks weird as fuck on the the Ghost Horror clones as well. All these, yeah. And those don't get any better. Those just look dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're supposed to look like that, so maybe, maybe that's a little bit, uh, yeah. But I meant more like, like, how do you feel like when you watch the trailers? Were you just, in, were you actually just like, oh hell yeah, a new Monster Hunter, and this is fucking, this is gonna be great? Or did you also had like a bunch of like a big salt rock in your mouth, and you were like, nah, nah. this tastes a little bit weird. It's an interesting an- analogy, but um, yeah, no, I absolutely had that weird feeling. Do which is what? because it is one hundred percent because the monsters look weird. That is why. Yeah, they are fair. The monsters are the chocolate. And and um, yeah, we didn't get like the one big guy that tells us, "Yeah, motherfuckers, this is Monster Hunter." Right, even just, the dragon, which uh, which I heard from many people, looks more traditional. Monster Hunter did not look traditional. Monster Hunter to me, he was very geometrically perfect, <laughs> which is very unrealistic for a monster. Yeah, I, so, I don't know when I when I looked at the new monsters, I really what I could not get rid of because I stepped into Frontier a little bit. Was that the, the, there's somebody, there's some people from Frontier that are sitting in the art direction of that game. I cannot unsee that. Because we got, we got the worm thingy. That worm thing is like, there's like, there's a bunch of worms of these, or these, these land leviathans. I don't know what else to call them. The in Frontier, which oh, are yeah. really weird. They're really, really weird. That's that one with that weird uh, tongue. The tongue, yeah. That, that looks too. very close to that. Yeah. Well, you and know, you, a comic version of it. <laughs> Yeah. And then you kind of you look further into like the uh, let's say the Thormagala again. That Thormagala really reminded me of like how they designed that extremely weird version of Gormagala 
in Chagaramagala in Frontier for uh, Zen or whatever it was called. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I was like, there's somebody from Frontier sitting there. Uh, their, their designs have pretty much always been pretty much... I feel like they have been really hit or miss. Like, some monster designs are really weird in Frontier. Yeah, uh, that is true. But all of them look respectable. Yeah. I feel like. All of them are like, okay, this is weird, but I respect it to exist. And then there's like Legombi where I'm like, this does not need to exist. This does Legombi. not need to be. Why <laughs> you hate Legombi that much, really? I fucking despise Legombi. There's not, not a single positive thing <laughs> oh, about yeah. Legombi existing. Come on, it's a, it's, a, it's a little snowy bunny. How can you... It is on, not man. even cute. It is disgusting. How can you Have you seen say its face? that about the snow? Oh my God, I can't People are going to be furious. <laughs> it is repulsive. But you know Repugnant what? Repugnant even. Oh my God, this is terrible. Revolting. I, 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 man, I can't believe I'm on a podcast with you. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can turn this into a Legombi hate podcast. That's fine. I mean. No, don't turn it into that. Fuck Legombi. Well, let's, let's say this. So now imagine you have Legombi, but there's mini Legombis around it and they're walking all around the map and they influence Kill the them environment. All. Burn them. <laughs> The yeah, so what, <laughs> what I wanted to step into actually just a while ago actually was uh, so these hordes they're gonna like we know that now uh, that the hordes actually they move around the map and you can they, they can run over your camp so if you yeah. if you haven't heard of that yet like you you have heard it I told you but uh, mm-hmm. for the for the listeners out there which is that camps you now have to Build them yourself, pretty much. Like not, not like in you know you're not building them like Minecraft, but you pretty much have to manually set them up. And they can be destroyed by, uh, for example, the um, this the I was I was about to say uh, snowstorm, uh, the the sandstorm, and also hordes. So as far as I understand the what I heard correctly, it's kind of like you put down your camp, you set it up, and then if you don't look at it, like if you don't like take care of your camp, eventually. There's gonna be monsters or even horse that just run over that. So you kind of need to figure out where you actually place your camp, and you constantly have to take care of that if you want to have a base there. Right. Like, do Which you, is like, a thing that I enjoy. I like this idea. I'm just yeah. There's one thing I've been thinking about, which is: Do we get to teleport between them? And if so, does that contribute to the game feeling, or does it defeat the purpose? of having a more open world map that is also what i thought about like because like why would like, if you if you would have camps that you can put like anywhere on the map right and you could fast travel there like what's the like there, there's so much traver- so there's su- such a big focus on the trailers on traversal how is it that like yeah. if you now have fast traveling how is it that that plays into that open world nature and that the traversal that they have shown so far because like with teleportation in a lot of open world games, you pretty much just, I don't want to say ruin the game, but you just go exactly against the, the entire game design of making yeah. an open world. Right. Like, I well, mean, I, there's, one, there's one way I could see this work really well, which is that you are just, you're very limited in how many camps you can have. Like depending huh. on the size of the map, it was said to be like two or three times of what we have in world, maybe more. Um, like in world, you can easily have like six camps, and there's a good reason to to teleport between them. But there's also always a good reason to walk instead, because there's a lot of places you can get a lot faster by walking, because there's still a good distance between the camps. And if you have the same amount of camps, or like maybe a few more on an even bigger map, then you have a good reason to teleport for long distances and a very good reason not to teleport for everything else. And that might not ruin it. Um, yeah, you do that, need the convenience of teleporting. I do think that's that's a necessity. What, what I think would kind of be cool, I, I, it might be the most terrible thing that I, that I have an, uh, as an idea for that, is like, I would actually kind of like it if you could, you know how you could like, you can queue up for hunts uh, from the hub and just sit there and wait until you get thrown into one. I would kind of like it if you would, if you could like say, hey, I'm going to take the, not, let's say the cart, and while you are in queue, or like while you are moving from A to B, there's a cart where the hunters actually go into the same cart, and they will end up at that one spot where the guy is or where the quest begins. I think that would be kind of cool. 
Right. But I, I yeah, that's know, another like, thing. Thinking about how do you actually merge hunters without ruining the immersion? If they just fucking spawn there, does that ruin the immersion? Because we had the same thing in World where you can just fly into places using the like drakes. Yeah, but the um, drakes were like, like that's, that's like the entire opposite of being immersive. Like it doesn't like these yeah. drakes don't really look like that they can carry you. If Nor do they look like they should be able to just fly, <laughs> yeah, right. especially in the speed that they do. It is it, it is weird. immersion breaking. It, it I is. think it would be worse in wilds because if in wilds you have this gigantic map and then some hunters just conveniently fly in on these small birds, it does not bode well. I don't don't think that's a good idea to do it. Yeah, it's, um, it's all neither would it be a good idea to like spawn them in the area in the like village and then they ha have to walk there. Unless you make it so you can only join a quest while you still, while the the person you're joining is still in the village, that you all start there and then you can go wherever together. I don't know if that's a good idea, but that's one way to do it. Well, I mean, there, there's definitely now a thing with like preparing uh, that we have not had to consider like before, which is like in the older games, we would pretty much just just go prepare, go on a quest, you go back, and then you prepare again, and you, this is the cycle, right? And then you have then you had world, which is like, well, you can always go back to your camp and restock on things, which made a lot of things really convenient, and there's no down downside to that. Well, in the older games, you kind of like had to actually, you know, in some cases, you actually had to learn how to make use of the environment to get to, to stack yeah. up on items again, which was which like, I prefer, by the way. I, I think I don't think like the fact better. that you can just restock in the tent, and I don't like the fact you can just. Get all of your weapons in the tent. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Because you're not bringing your fucking entire inventory. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And it, like, it, is, it makes the game so much easier. But here's the thing. So what I always, every time I looked at, uh, every time I played Monster Hunter, or like every time I saw like the CGI opening to Monster Hunter Freedom 2, or was it Freedom Unite, I think? Not sure. It was always like, there, there's like your palicos and the hunter they're building up that that camp right they bring a bunch of resources there that they bring from yeah. the hunt, right now always was like why that is why like fucking carts too with all the stuff on it yeah well, well, I, imagine I you had to like, bring back the the monster after you kill it yes <laughs> so you're like fucking cart it back oh, man that would, that would be so annoying like all right <laughs> okay well you what you want to you want to hunt you want to hunt the special guy again well too bad you first have to drive there for 30 minutes and just dissect it you know? <laughs> yeah i don't know but i i really i really would like to see them do uh what they did in that cgi opening from freedom uh, unite which is you have a bunch of resources you want to bring a bunch of stuff for that hunt so you're like okay let's prepare mm -hmm. a cart or like a caravan to bring this stuff there build a camp put the resources there and then from there you go and you can only take care you can only take the resources that you have brought to that camp I right really like that. that would be a nice compromise actually i, I don't remember know if the like that, but it would be cool you remember the the uh, drops that you had in gu where you could order the guys to like drop you uh, resources. Oh, and, like, you five mean like the, or 10 minutes the into the games? Those were ridiculous. Yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> that would be interesting too to have that, that like cool. a way of that, like a paddock who comes comes uh, arrives with like a fucking cart or something and just delivers your stuff. That cool. would be fun. I don't think it's gonna happen, but it would be fun. Well, they, what they did, what is confirmed, is that you can you can fire the signal flare, and there was they will actually come uh, even in an offline mode. There will be NPCs that will join you on the hunt. So that's like the followers from uh, Sunbreak. That yeah, that was confirmed. And I don't know how to feel about that. I think it's great because I know a lot of people that really just want to, they want to have the option to play this game solo. And so far, they really feel like that this trailer is really just like, well, nah, they're not really going to do it. So I think it's a good thing that you can do that. How does it contribute, though? You can still play solo without having NPC hunters. Well, so so here's the thing: like people feel, they feel like they are like how do I say this? It's like they feel like they are slower when they play solo. Uh, when well, compared to to playing in multiplayer, because multiplayer numbers are just fucking on crack. Okay, it's just that's yes, just it's a different video game. Yeah, it's just a completely different game. So. What what these solo players pretty much want is that they want this they want to have the same experience that they don't want to have the solo experience uh, just completely deviate from what the multiplayer experience is. That has been like a big challenge for the for the game itself. 
because like I don't know, you probably remember it. You do your challenges, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Which is you go into the into the guild hall, and now you have to do a G rank quest solo. Like it just sucks ass because the monster just has significantly more health, deals more damage, and you're just fucked, right? Yeah, most of the G rank quests in the old games are still fine, and then when you get like to to certain quests, it becomes near impossible. Which one, for example? Do you know any? The or... event a la Treyon in three. Oh years. God! Yeah, now I'm getting flashbacks. Yep. Yeah. That took me like 45 okay. minutes and like three streams, I think. Jesus, that is a lot. It might have been more than 45 minutes, actually. It might have been closer to 50. Um, you know, talking talk about 45 minutes, by the way, we, we, we're, we're on here for quite some time. Just yes, I know. <laughs> I, can, I can see the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, but, so but there's, I want to talk about that for a second here. Yeah. Um, sure. That's one thing that we don't, don't have anymore Alatra. these days. That's going to be another podcast. No, that's one thing we don't have anymore these days is these super long quests where things that things just get so hard if you want to solo it that it takes the entire quest time that you have. Also, quest time might not come back anymore actually at all. Um, if oh, yeah. things are more closely mm-hmm. to the expeditions, we might not get quest time anymore, which again, quest time is a relic from the past. We don't need it. Quest time is not necessary. Yeah, that is. I, I agree. There is a point in quest time, but... Most cases, fuck quest time. Why is Fatalis 30 minutes? Fuck that shit. <laughs> like it, I, it, I think it's only for like specific encounters uh, that really adds like a bunch of pressure on you to actually perform really well. But I yes. think if they if they get rid of that, I, there's still enough pressure, there's enough problems in Mod Center like, right. that, that you have to, as a player, has to deal with, right? Mechanically. That, that, that so, doesn't make a difference. Going back to the idea of soloing the game, the point of soloing the game was always to solo the game. If I want to solo the game, I don't want to play with NPC hunters. That is very counterintuitive to solo play, in my opinion. Um, I don't hate it being like an option, um, but it does feel similar to like Guardian armor in the in the sense of that if you use it, oh, your yeah. game is going to be incredibly fucking easy, and if you don't, then it's it's a real video game essentially. Mm. Um, well, it's it's all about yeah. how they implement it and how strong these uh, yeah, we'll see. let's say we'll followers see. are. Mm-hmm. I, like think, in I think Frontier, for the, the game is essentially unplayable without followers. <laughs> at, at least at some point. In Sunbreak? In Frontier. Oh, in front oh yeah. It's like you're you're just gonna get your, your ass whooped. Because like the monsters yeah. are always gonna be right on you, and if you don't have anybody that is like taking aggro just for like a moment, you will have a bad time. So I, I yeah. see that. That is a big issue. Another right. big issue is that they just have a fucking shitload of HP and you're just not going to be able to kill them. I'm, I still have a no faint going in Frontier where I play solo. Um, Which is terrible. I, I, at some point I'll play it again. It's never so. <laughs> it is. It's supposed it's quite... to be for player. And that's, a, that's, a, that's actually where I wanted to go anyway. Um, there are some quests in World, not in Rise, luckily, but in World, that are not supposed to be done with one person. At all. They're not even supposed to be possible as one person. They're not designed around being possible. They happen yeah. to be, but nobody thought about it being possible. Um, so this is absolutely not coming back. I don't see a quest in Wilds where you're not supposed to do it alone. I don't see a quest where like, oh, there's going to be like four instances of four hunters doing the same thing and you can't see each other like in world. I don't think that it's going to be a thing where it's like, this is has a four player scaling and it doesn't scale down like in world. I don't think that's coming back because nobody liked it and it's bullshit <laughs> and you're well, really messing with the single players there. Well, you, you say that, but Safi Jiva and Kova Taroth were the things that the world players especially have spammed the most. Safi has a scaling. Well, Safi has a uh, uh, scaling? All right. Okay. Yeah, Safi has a scaling. Uh, Kolv doesn't, and they learned from Kolv, and that's why they gave Safi the scaling, is my theory. Um, well, but I, yeah, I, but I, the, like... the, the people who play that are multiplayer players. If you ask, if you ask single player players, they fucking despise Kolv and they do. Uh, they do. And the I other one. Agree with them. Because it's AIDS. The, 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 the first time I played Kolv, it took me 10 hours on stream to beat Kolv No Faint. That's terrible. And that's not I 10 just... hours of like tries. That is one sitting. Because you know, you know the nature of Call of Terrath? It gets weaker the more you fight it. So it was 10 hours <laughs> of getting her lower and lower. And at some point, she doesn't get any lower. And there was still a couple hours until I actually beat her. And it, imagine you, you farm that solo. 
That's just not an option. Nobody's going to do that. So I, I don't I, think I, that's coming back. Plus, I, I it doesn't really, really f suit the the the, f the 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 I don't know how to say this the properly, wilds. but the the the, the <laughs> fluidness of the wilds map and philosophy the idea it, it of you kind of just walking around and you find a monster and oh suddenly it has a multiplayer scaling that doesn't make any sense yeah it doesn't like it's it's really weird like there's probably some adjustments that they have to do on the fly just for balancing yeah. that makes sense right because we do not have yeah. like adjustable uh, health pools at least which is i think a thing but well i i think i don't think that they will bring back something like Safijiva and like the the shared like 16 player but it's four players times four kind of quests i don't think they will bring that back uh but i do think it was a good idea to explore that kind of territory uh what i would like to see like this is the one thing that we are pretty much now waiting for which is probably the one thing we can end the, the whole podcast with which is a bunch of thoughts there which is um interactivity between um player hunts because like imagine this imagine you have this big ass map and it's so dynamic in whatever it does and things are happening at all times but now you have let's say uh, 32 players in one session so first of all how many players can be in one session and if i go with you on a hunt with like we two we together go onto, onto a hunt and we go and fight a rathian for example and now like there's two other guys who are fighting uh, like a rathlos or something can we actually overlap in the game and see us doing like can we actually then start to interact with another and can we now as a group of four fight those two monsters at the same time or like imagine this with with four times like uh like you have two parties that are made of four players do you now have eight players that are just going around and now fighting these two monsters at the same time because i don't i don't see monster hunter being a game where you have eight players on the screen at, at the same time this is like yeah, massively no. this is terrible for the game balancing. It's, yeah. That's where they hit, hit them in the cold fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not why. It's probably technical reasons. But it, it, yeah, I don't see that happening. So my a friend of mine had this dream of playing a Monster Hunter game and you just kind of go into like a massive open-ended map and you just find another person randomly playing at the same time, just kind of hunting something and you decide to join them, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't really think cool. that is happening. I think you're still going to have your lobbies, essentially. And you probably have to add your friends into a list and then you can do that kind of thing. Or like say like, hey, this is, my, my session right now is open. You can join in if you would like to or something. Yeah, so what I expect is that you have normal sessions as you, as you just have. And then in part of that session, if you join a session, you'd like spawn in the fucking village. And, that from, and then from that point on, you can just kind of play the video game. It's not no longer like oh I'm, I'm in somebody's session I'm just playing the video game and we happen yeah. to be on the same it's more like a server than a session it is a session but it, it yeah. feels more like a server um, is what I imagine so you could go out and just kind of go out into the wild and, and hunt something and so another player of the same session could join and I could imagine that several people could be in the same session uh, well obviously <laughs> but I mean several as in more than four. Because we had, had that in world, but you just couldn't have more than four people in what quest, right? Mm. So how do you do that? Well, you have the ability to, you, you could make it. So like, I don't know, like 16 people could be just walking around the map. But how would you stop people from just, I almost said a really bad word here, um, ganging <laughs> up on a uh -huh. monster and just kind of destroying it, right? So if, if 16 people, even in low rank gear, Try attacking a Rathian at the same time. That Rathian is not doing anything. Yeah, it's not going to do anything. He's just going like, to die immediately. Just consider how many tools we have to just turn any monster into a oh, yeah. dummy. That is, it, that's insane. They, they, that's, I hope that they really balance yeah. that. But what I can say that is not going to happen. There, there is a game called Fantasy Store Online 2. Have you heard of that? I heard the name. Okay, so Fantasy Store Online 2 uh, has like a new version of it, which is called New Genesis. Uh, a piece of two new genesis has something really interesting going going on when it comes to like this open world kind of thing so what they do is there's one big city at the center or not really a city but there's one big area where people just always can appear and they just there's just a lot of people there but once you go out of that zone seamlessly by the way you can go to just positions on the map you can have encounters and the server automatically uh makes groups for the players so you seamlessly end up in a group with a bunch of players and any yeah. other players that cut, that would exceed that limit, they don't even appear because they don't matter right now. So that's, that's right. really cool because 
you just you can have like these big fights uh, that are so huge and the server is just like oh yeah so well this is this this thing is designed for eight players so you just go there and there's only going to be eight players that you can see that you can play with but there's maybe another guy that's like in a different realm of existence let's say that they are also eight people but they're completely different players and they're all doing the same yeah. fight so that's that's something that I can see that they might do. That, that, with, that is uh, what I'm expecting. Miles. That is low-key what I'm expecting. I, I and I'm do. expecting it to to be like you you like you, you watch a hunter leave the area and they just disappear into nothingness because they, <laughs> they enter the other plane and, and yeah. then you're like, okay, that's a little immersion breaking, but you know what? It's fine, at least it's fucking seamless. Yeah. Um that's they, what they I probably expect will have happen. animation that's like, oh yeah, they 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 they're slow, they're going they're going home. Okay, they're taking a nap. <laughs> they're like gone forever. I can see. And if that is the case, then well, one question would be: How do you, if you have several people in your, let's say you have sixteen people in your lobby, right, and you want to play with these three exact friends, how do you make it that you play with them? Because do you join quests? Is that a thing still? I don't know. Oh, if that, you can that still they join have, quests or not? That's what they already have actually uh, set in the thing that I recently just looked into, just actually mm-hmm. today, which is that. So there isn't really a quest board anymore, but what you now have, it's just that, hey, I, I, I don't know if this is confirmed yet, but pretty much imagine this, you, you go, you're just, there's, there's a village, whatever, you go there, there's an NPC saying, okay, so, well, we need, to, we need this thing to be taken care of. And then you just open the, the world map, which apparently is gigantic, and then you just click on that monster, and pretty much this is how you start a quest. So you don't have okay. to go through that uh, through that process of like, okay, let's go to the quest maiden and speak with her. That makes uh, sense. Right? You stare at the boobs for a long time and then you decide <laughs> on a quest. And then you go on and actually like, queue the thingy and eat and whatever and you go on. Instead, you just open it and you, you put your marker there and I don't even know if you're going to get teleported there. But essentially, you can just literally walk there and start doing right. that, whatever it is. But if that is the case and you want to play with your friends, how do you, if we have these multiple realm, realm kind of idea, how do you make it that you actually end up in a group fighting that thing? Well, that's a that's a big question. Like, they have not answered that. They're very silent mm-hmm. about it. They they yeah. actually avoid the question. I need to know. <laughs> well, if they're yeah. avoiding the question, that's probably something interesting. I would. Assume. It is probably yeah. I I do think there's probably some sort of like uh, grouping that you can do. Like you know yeah, how we absolutely. had in Sunbreak the the hunter. Uh, thingies hunter connect thingies i don't know what they're called but no i don't yeah, know I that i only played solo you, you don't okay well basically you you make groups online with a bunch of people that are just tied to that and you can join people just through that and mm. you can be part of multiple of these groups so i i okay. think i think that part we're talking about like t- t- playing together i think they've already figured it out but they don't want to tell us because it's so good <laughs> oh yeah, I think that's the absolutely the, the case, and I think that it is it one hundred percent will give you the ability to like decide who to play with. Absolutely, anything else would be stupid. Um, yeah. but I could see the ability to have a lot of people in one uh, thing. I could even see like a hundred people in one lobby, just people kind of Me fucking too. hanging out in the like a big. And depending on how big the village is, right, could be like a massive village. And you have like a massive amount of people there. Um, I could also that I could see that not being the case at all too. Um, I, I have no idea how that's gonna be. Honestly, like so I like like we we're gonna end this uh, after this, okay? Uh, we will right. make another one for everybody because like we're talking too much. Uh, which is I had one thing that I back when. Uh, Back when World released, I already thought about this, and then I talked about it to my friends when there was uh, Monster Hunter Rise's uh, announcement or end release. And it is that I, I sort of like have the feeling, it's just my gut telling me that, so this is not confirmed or anything, it's just my brain being weird again, which is, I always have, I always had the feeling since then that, that, that the devs in Capcom, that they know that they could pull off a Monster Hunter MMORPG. Or not an MMORPG as like how we know it, but some sort of like that that social interconnectivity that we know from those games, right? Something yeah. like Frontier. And I think that they actually are cooking up like a big book for that, for like sort of like this, this, this Monster Hunter MMO. And I wonder if, and my prediction was that in the sixth generation, there will be a game that is sort of like a Monster Hunter MMO. 
But I was like, no way they would do that for Monster Hunter 6. Instead, they probably do that after that game because they probably have iterated enough to be able to do that. So like mm-hmm. me now seeing that these ideas of like this this open world already being like already happening in like Monster Hunter 6, which is wilds, is crazy to me. Like I, I was it always like I, I was always <laughs> It is wilds. It is wilds, man. Alright. Do you right. do you wanna say anything to close uh this podcast episode off? Um so while I do see the the open world multiplayer thing absolutely being the future for Monster Hunter. I don't see it being a massive multiplayer. I don't think that is ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, at least not in a mainline game. Yeah, me too. Agreed. Beautiful. We have Frontier for this. Frontier yeah. remake when? Oh god, <laughs> there, it's gonna happen eventually. Imagine new the market, Frontier remake. The, listen, the market is crying for this pretentious MMO, but it's not an MMO thing. They're, like everybody's crying for this kind of stuff and like I, I think that if there's any franchise that could eventually pull something like that off it would be Monster Hunter but not in the Absolutely. way that we know it from other games but yeah, that's, Monster that's, always that's is dreamy. different and that's it's the main point of Monster Hunter. Hunter that's why Monster Hunter to some people is just the best game in the world because it's just so unique it's so different from everything else even people who try to imitate Monster Hunter like um, Wild Hearts Wild Hearts is an entirely different game it's a very fun game, but it's, it's not a Monster Hunter. Yeah, it, it, there's nothing that gets remotely close to what Monster Hunter is doing. And, they, and Monster Hunter yeah. has always been ahead of its time for this sort of genre, whatever they're cooking up, which I currently call, mm-hmm. like, I have always called the Monster Hunter genre because it's so unique. Is it that is, nobody, yeah. nobody was able to pull this off what they're doing because they have figured it out in a way that nobody else does it. Yeah. yeah, they have the right focus too, most importantly. Well, ninety nine percent of the time they have the right focus. Well, you got you got to do some pages. mistakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, we learn from those. We learn from those. Yeah. Rampages are not coming back. If rampages are oh, coming thank back, goodness. Thank goodness. I am doing something very illegal on stream. Oh God, please! Don't. I'm not telling you what it is yet. All right, guys. Uh, if you have any thoughts and opinions, let us know in the comments. I don't know if Ryan will read in my comment section. I doubt he will, uh, but I will certainly do. So I'll ban all of you. Oh my God. You're not even modding my my comment. <laughs> she like, like guys. He's just going here pretending he's this powerful crocodile. It's crazy. Anyway, so uh, thanks for uh, watching or listening, and uh, see you in the next one. I, I hope that we can like deliver some good conversations here. All right. This is your this is your moment. You gotta gotta say goodbye or something like that. Um, cucumber.